What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for a discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and a special guests from around the industry. I'm one of your hosts today, Alex Van Aken, and today I'm joined by Marcus Stewart. How you doing, Marcus? I'm excited. Yeah? You guys, you know what's this weekend? You know what oh, this weekend is, Alex? It's Christmas for you. The Easter, yeah. after, the weekend after Easter weekend? It, that is objectively accurate. The I weekend after it. the first full moon, after the spring equinox, the weekend after part two? <laughs> yes, that's that's the long way to say it's WrestleMania this weekend. Mm. I'm so excited, guys. Two I, nights. I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm, I, I've been, it's, it's been hard to sleep. Because I've been so excited for you, Marcus. <laughs> for me? Wow. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, Not even yeah. for the company. That's just how good of a friend I am. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's going to be a very fun two shows, hopefully. It's been built up very well over the last few months. I'm. I Is the I've story going to get finished? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, we got that tag team match on night one hmm. to determine how, if the story gets finished the next night. You know, The Rock is there. Everyone's there. Come on, Rock guys! There? He's I'm excited. Up. He's wrestling. He's in. He's in a. He's I'm a big part so of excited. Me, actually, he's a not, bad guy. Is that like a new? Is that like a thing? Like yeah, thought, yeah. Like, he interrupted Cody Rhodes's, you know, road to victory. We can get an entire storyline right here, if you want. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just surprised that The Rock is uh, has time between like pitching tequila to me or whatever he does in his free time. Well, Wait, he's, but, on, <laughs> he's on the board for TKO, which is the company that owns WWE now. Like he's part uh, of the board. Okay. So but Marcus doesn't. Also, Kyle Hilliard. Hello, Kyle Hilliard. Oh yeah, hey, I'm here. Hey. Yeah, Kyle's here too. Um, Marcus, I have a question. Isn't is this rumor or fact that the rock has a clause that he can never lose on screen and does that apply to wrestlemania well i mean it can't apply to wrestling because that would be hard in wrestling and there's a good i mean honestly will he lose this weekend it's actually i think it's 50 50 i i i could not it could go either way whether or not he loses this weekend and the the tag team Mm -hmm. match that he's involved with but i i've heard in his movies that he has i don't know if it's like i can't lose but it's like isn't it like he can only get hit a certain number of times or something like that i I think there's like a whole mythos surrounding it's all stuff that really benefits the the story you know yeah that's what's important in a movie yeah (laughs) which i mean like the actor's personality and whether or not he wins or loses like that's important to the plot and character development much like wrestling which i mean (laughs) i guess if you have that kind of pull go for it <laughs> if, if it benefits you go for it yeah. i like watching a movie where like i don't where i just know from the beginning like what's gonna happen and who's gonna win and yeah that absolutely will never you, be in danger like that's fun that way i don't have to watch the movie and read Rick wikipedia at the same time you know exactly <laughs> saves how many me times step. rock is gonna get hit in the face because you read yeah. his contract you're like oh that was hit number four okay that's it for him he's good that's, he's done the rest of the movie yeah. he's just gonna he's that's gonna the movie ass. magic baby <laughs> That's why we fell in love with cinema. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Nicole Kidman is talking about. <laughs> uh, well, seen that, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the uh, the Regal opening where she goes and like sits down in front of the. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, of course. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen? <laughs> I have seen it, yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> I have seen a movie okay. in the last five years. Well, I was saying, have you ever seen the edits people have done where they've just replaced that whatever movie she's watching, which is some inappropriate scene from? No, movie. actually, oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's actually great. good. Someone I had one seen that. with the uh, the sex scene from that. I forget the name of the movie, but it's the one with like Adam Driver and, and Lady Gaga. Oh, the last not Jedi? Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, the the really. I know really there was like some right? publicized yeah. sex scene in that, and someone took that scene and put it in that that oh, video, Ferrari, and it Ferrari made it very movie? funny because yeah. she's sitting there like eating popcorn just amazed in <laughs> all of what she was watching well, i just remember it was like late pan i mean i we're still there's still pandemic issues right but like yeah. it was like it was like we were sort of on the cusp of like being more comfortable in the pandemic and i remember seeing that uh that ad and nicole kinman's like we come to the movies like we love being here we and come like, to this place it's for like, magic my pro- my thing was like the pro- that's the problem is not that we don't like movies. You don't have to convince me to like a movie. That the indescribable feeling the when pand- the lights the begin to dim. Pandemic. <laughs> you know that's yeah, why like, I haven't been coming here. And we go to, to somewhere we've never been before. Stories. It's like that's a weird takeaway to from that <laughs> when the world is like on fire. 
It's like, they haven't been going to theaters because they forgot the magic of the movies. It's like, no, it's because I could die if I breathe in the wrong <laughs> place. Martin's I actually... <laughs> I think that that monologue is a great pitch for the Game Informer show. And we go somewhere we've never been before, not to just be entertained, but somehow reborn together. <laughs> yeah, that that Can I just be the new the... intro to the show? Can yeah, I like that. <laughs> Dazzling images on a huge silver screen. We're on it's Twitch just, now, it, you know? It's just our... It's just <laughs> recording us on I'm Twitch. <laughs> Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. That's the best Ooh. line. That's the iconic line, right? It's good. I mean, look, it's good writing. Uh, thank you. I wrote that. Um, oh, well, before we get I tweeted that at Regal, and they they took me up. <laughs> before we uh, we get into the show today, we're gonna be we're gonna be covering a lot of topics: Stellar Blade, Pepper Grinder, Open Roads. I've been playing some Summer House uh, as well as some other smaller games. A, I was wondering when he wrote Summer House in the notes. I, I thought you meant like you went to a summer house, and I was like, that's an interesting. Oh no, I'm surprised you. Like, I'm surprised Mr. Indy here hasn't heard of well, Summer House. I remembered it after the mm, fact because okay. I have seen it, but for a good while I was like, oh, did he? go see a summer house that he's uh, really into and just want no to I, I wish i don't have money um but before we get into all that i do want to call out again last week we had matt on the show matt miller all of our bosses our boss yeah, um, yours too everyone watching yeah yeah <laughs> uh he came on talked about our new magazine subscription um and uh i heard y'all had a good conversation but i just wanted to plug it at the top of the show again for people who missed the news uh game informer has a new magazine subscription uh for 19.91 a year you get 10 issues or you can get print key yeah yeah print magazine subscription uh, so 1991 for 10 for 10 issues that 1991 year we were we were founded uh, if you want to get 20 issues and sign up for two years you can get that for 34 uh, 99 34 yeah yeah mm-hmm. 34 99 um, go to subscribe.gameinformer.com to uh, register there super easy couple clicks and you'll you'll have a new print magazine subscription hitting your mailboxes every five to six ish weeks. However, yeah. that breaks down. But we've got a yeah. bit. We also we have a big cover story coming up next. I do want to tease that. Like, yeah, probably our biggest of 2024. I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the not the say it's like right. There's no yeah, metric really we can compare it's, it to. It's subjective. But it's, it's a big yeah. one. I'm, yeah, I'm there's some big ones coming up. And yeah. I think it's worth pointing out, Alex, that the the subscription also includes the digital issue. Yes. So you do get both. Yes. You get it, yep. you, you know. So if you can read it however you want, but you will get a print magazine in the mail. And yeah. uh, I, I, we work very hard on that thing. And it helps keep us afloat. If you like this show, you like getting the show for free, uh, please consider supporting us for nineteen ninety one. Listen, I got McDonald's for my wife and I for breakfast. That that was twenty one dollars this morning. <laughs> and it was it was a number it was a I mean, bacon, egg and cheese meal with orange juice times two. So you can get a really good magazine for less than that. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. And you've also got a better meal at Denny's for that. Yeah. I mean, you could also eat the paper if you if you do, you know, (laughs) you need to also get a meal in. Um, If you find yourself stranded on an island with only issues of Game Informer to sustain you. Yeah. uh, We we have accounted for that. And we've only uh, used the most edible magazine paper that we could find. Yeah. For legal purposes, that is a joke. Uh, Do not eat the magazine. (laughs) Um, it's well, like that, uh, college humor skit where the guy is telling people not to eat the Tide Pods, like he's oh yeah, the yeah. So like, yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's get into the show proper. Uh, Kyle, that's me. You've been playing this game that uh, has been all over my feed. It's been honestly the the conversation around it has been exhausting, so we figured why not talk about it <laughs> on this show. <laughs> you're uh, you've been exactly. playing Stellar Blade, right? Yeah, I played the demo. You played um, the demo, okay, yeah, which yeah. Which is, I, I got to play it a little early, and now it's available to everyone, um, and I, I think I think the save will just move right into the, the whole game. Yeah, which is which is nice. Uh, um, so so this, yeah. this used to be, what, Project Eve? Is that what this used to be? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. That I had missed that connection at some point in time. Uh, it's been a busy few weeks for me. Uh, busy, busy couple of months. Honestly, I know this thing was announced uh, previously, but you know, seeing seeing the the fanfare, the honestly dumb takes about this game online, it's got my curiosity peaked. Um, 
I want to know. Yeah. T- tell me about it, because all I know is it's it's this very um, uh, well endowed character who it's an action game. Am I yeah. right there? I mean, yeah. The conversation around the game has sort of skewed towards like, look how sexy the protagonist is. Yeah. Um, and like the fear going into the game is like, is that all this is? Is it just like a, a, a an attractive lady? And that's what's I hope not, because if I wanted sex appeal, I'd go play Halo Master <laughs> Chief. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah, so sure. sexy. Co- is is for the narrative context? Isn't the isn't Eve? Isn't she like a cyborg or is she like a robot She's not. lady? No, it's funny. I I interviewed the developers and that was like one of my direct questions. Was like is she, like I think I even phrased it like literally much to the translator's chagrin. I was like, so is she like a robot? Like what's going on here? And no, she's not. She's a human person who like grew up in space, basically like. Earth is inundated by these creatures and mm. a bunch of they like egg they s- escaped Earth and like orbit Earth. Uh, and that's like where they live safely. And she's like this soldier who has been sent down to try to fight back. And then sort of the, the twists. I mean, it, like I say, quote unquote, twisted. Th- there are humans who are alive on Earth. And that's like a big surprise uh, for Eve and, and her, the other people there. But the, the thing the thing that I was kind of getting at is like, I went into this and I was like worried. I was like, this game has like really amazing visuals, but I, I do worry that it's just too like male gazy and it's a lot of like leering and just like, look how sexy we made this character. But like, and that there is a lot of that there undeniably, but like the the cool thing is like, it's a really like solid action game. Like the okay. combat like feels really good. Like I was taken almost immediately of like kind of going in like, yeah, I don't really know what to expect. I know they're inspired a lot by Nier Automata, um, which this might be blasphemy, but like the combat is, is cool in Nier Automata, but it's like mostly I've always just kind of felt like okay about it. It's never mm-hmm. been this like driving thing for me, but this like I was, I was very quickly sort of enamored with it because it's a lot of countering. It's a lot of like, um like it's you're not like hitting you're not mashing the dodge button a lot it's a lot of like coming up one-on-one on on enemies and sort of like being careful and like using counters and just executing these really flashy attacks and kills like the the boss sort of executions and stuff are just like way over the top in like an awesome way with like good camera work that's like because like sometimes like camera work in these sequences like especially if you go back a couple like if you look at like 360 era action games and stuff like the camera moves and cuts so fast that it's like hard to understand what is happening in the mm-hmm. action but the thing i like about stellar blade is it's like it is broadcasted very directly you know what's happening you know where the titular stellar blade is in the course of the action and what's happening and it just makes it all very satisfying and then on top of that there's this layer which i'm hopeful like the it's hard to look at the demo and be like it's is like it, it, will this last the duration of the game will i be this engaged but the idea of this woman who like grew up in space coming down to earth and sort of seeing like an apocalyptic earth and like there's a scene in the demo which is which is cool where she's like it's raining and she's like oh man i've never like seen rain i this is weird i didn't know this thing existed and like i like that idea of this person who is a human mm-hmm. like coming to earth and like exploring and being like, I've he- I've only heard about all this stuff. This is really fascinating. Yeah. Does um, she say that the sky is crying? I don't remember. Is that she she misund- I, I'm asking. Like, oh. if she misunderstands what rain is. It seems like something. No, like, no, she doesn't. Why is she the sky crying? She doesn't misunderstand it. Right. That's oh, okay. the thing. It's not like she's like uh, uh, born, born. She's not born sexy yesterday. You know, to call out the cliche. Like, like that's what? Like, that's a thing. You guys, you guys have never heard that. I've never heard that. That's like no. it's like a cliche in like a lot of like in a lot of stories of like um, this beautiful woman just appears who doesn't know anything. And it's mm. like, oh, I get to teach her, you know, like this. That's, oh, this is OK. A, like, yeah. That's like a, I've just never like, heard it put yeah, it's, it's the way that you trope. phrased oh, okay. it. Yeah, I've never heard that. Okay. Yeah. But that and that doesn't seem to be the case here. Like she knows what rain is. She's just never seen it or encountered it or touched it. You know what I mean? She's like she's like Ray in The Last Jedi. There's like that great scene where she's on the planet with Luke and she's like putting her hand out in the rain. And she's just like, I've never seen this. I've only heard of this stuff, you know? And like, I like that. I like that kind of story of someone sort of finally engaging with things they've only heard about. Like, 
like a attack on titan this is a weird thing to call it's really good about that too because like all those kids grew up in this enclosed space and then a lot mm. of attack on titan is like they go out in the world and they like see the ocean for the first time is like this huge season finale in one of the seasons where they're like i've only read about the ocean this is insane you know so i like those kinds of stories and i'm hopeful that that's what stellar blade is is like this cool sci-fi story about someone rediscovering earth like that seems like a cool idea and the action is super solid oh i'm like throwing around my fidget toys um but uh so uh, all that said like i i played that demo and finished it and was like i wanted to keep playing you know i was like disappointed that it ended mm -hmm. and i had been playing for like an hour at that point so i'm 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 very optimistic about stellar blade yeah i'm super psyched for it just because i i i'm a stylish action sicko yeah and you know hearing that they were using or that near automata is such a big uh influence for them is exciting because i'm a big fan of near automata uh and also the fact that this developer previously only um i believe he's kyle they only did mobile games right yeah before primarily. This. so for them to go from that to again it's only a demo it's only a slice but to, to transition to something that is a lot more fleshed out and like I don't know it feels like like a fully complete like game as and for it to be as well as it seems to be is pretty impressive for them um, yeah they, they yeah. wanted to make a game with an ending which is something i talked to them about which is just like yes thank you that is that that's all i want man <laughs> like, yeah like the stuff let's about not have to worry about setting up a franchise let's just you know let's well, not uh, let's not let's, uh, let's not make 13 other dimensions where you have to go fight a, you know a final boss with future dlc Maybe we can get to that a little later in the episode yeah i was gonna say like, let's wait to see how this sells and then we'll see if yes. it becomes a franchise right. but well, then, I, you know. that's the thing it's like there's the star wars of it all right where it's like if you look at a new hope they design that movie as a, a one and done right mm -hmm. it's got a beginning right. and a middle and a satisfying ending and then after it was successful they're like oh well we can expand this universe that that's what i want like let make me as a, a sort of a sort of isolated thing with a beginning middle and end and if it's successful and i love it like then we can worry about the future later that's you know if don't you don't have to worry about setting up the sequel that's future use problem just just let's get a complete story out there and i'm let's i'm, I'm hoping that's what stellar blade is yeah for sure and it's not that far away either it's it's, it's yeah, this yeah. month i forget april 26th like of the month right yeah yeah 26 uh, so yeah i i have not played the demo yet i think i might hold out for the the full game but yeah i i'm psyched you know i i haven't really paid much attention to or honestly cared about the discourse around the main character's design i'm just like uh, okay whatever it's like if it, it's just like i mean <laughs> bayonetta's super sexy Ma granted her sexiness is more tongue-in-cheek but yeah. like uh you know, it's just I just kind of be like, oh, OK. And then just I just want to play it. I just want to see how it just plays. A, just I just want a good action game with with, yeah. with quality visuals. Yeah, exactly. And if the story is my visuals, that, I mean, like the design of the environment. I we said that in our new gameplay today episode. We're like, this game looks really good. And everyone in the comments was like, yeah, looks really good. Right, guys. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was winking, <laughs> by the way, for for audio listeners. <laughs> uh. hmm. Okay. Good, cool environments. Good. It's you. It's, it's, the the designs are cool. The premise uh, inter interests me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me curious. Like that. That yeah. seems cool. Well, I didn't know that about cool this beforehand. Too. By the way, yeah. the, the anime designs that I saw look. They look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen like the 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 opening of the demo like ten times because like in various social media clips, uh, and it seems like you know a lot a lot of spectacle going on. Yes. Uh, I definitely want to check it out. I hope I get a code. Um, I, I'm down for for an action ga a character action game. It's been a minute. To be honest, I didn't. I you, that's like one of the genres that like weirdly, I never really got into Devil May Cry. I played them like occasionally with friends, or I'd rent I'd rent them, uh, but I never like really deep into the story or anything. Um, right. Yeah, and it's so, not deep, so you probably did go. <laughs> I experienced it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think you missed too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, I like doing some some cool combos, some flashy animations. You're right, Marcus. The the enemies do look good. I'm looking at the PlayStation Store, or no, I'm looking at this Kotaku story actually, um, and like this like pincer enemy with like two swords. Yeah, it looks looks very cool. I think that's the final boss of the demo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks it looks pretty cool. Um, well, hell yeah, I'm I'm glad to I'm glad to get, you know, uh, somebody whose opinion I trust on on the game so far. Um, 
What do you guys want to get into next? A compliment for me? That was a compliment. Yeah, yeah, that was a compliment. Hey. Did I sound sarcastic? No, no, I just wasn't okay. sure. Watch the game come out. It's just terrible. And you're like, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I'm never listening to you again. Well, hey, you recommended me Metal Gear. I loved it. Hey, that worked out. Um, you know, now. Nice, you it wasn't like the game had just come out. <laughs> you knew it was yeah, coming. but I trusted him. <laughs> <laughs> that it was I a was me game over the edge. I was the strong yeah. that broke the camel's back. You know what? I've heard about this Metal Gear game all these years, but Masterpiece really. <laughs> I trust Kyle. Yeah, I'll, I'll take his word. I'll try it. I trust Ooh. Kyle too. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, let's get into uh, Pepper Grinder a bit. I have downloaded the game on Switch. I have played through the first uh, le a couple levels. Um, I'm enjoying it, but I, I feel like I'm not the authority on this one. Uh, but I know you two have played it more than me, but uh, it seems like they, they kind of stuck the landing uh, from what I've played, from what I've heard. It seems like everybody's really enjoying this. I, I was having a couple issues, and it might be a Switch thing, with like when you're controlling the grinder, it can be a little sensitive. Um, that might just be my my particular Joy-Cons. I'm playing it on Switch, but I'm playing a. I'm not using the. I use the Hori pads. I don't use the. Okay. Hori yeah. Yeah. And I, I assume that uh, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, it, I assumed it felt like that. Like to me, it doesn't feel like it's a problem. It feels like intentional. Of like the drill is supposed to feel a little unwieldy, but not. Like I kind of like that it feels like it. Could I think it just comes down to I don't like controlling like more precision games on my Switch. I mean, um, if you use the Joy Cons without even like the like even for the I'm using stock as Switch. Yeah, Joy -Cons. no, 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 no. Yeah, because like <laughs> even before I bought the Hori pads, I bought those like uh, joystick kind of like extenders. That yeah, yeah, thumb. yeah. The like satisfy the, grip kind of thing. Yeah, whatever they're yeah. called. Yeah, just so that your thumb can actually fit and actually use it properly. So I, I, I feel like this game would be a nightmare with just like. It, yeah, it's oh. you're definitely fighting against the Joy Cons. I don't think that's a fault of the game. I think that's a fault of the, yeah. the Switch Joy Cons. But I, I really enjoyed like the flow that you get into. Yeah. Um, and then like the challenge as well, um, like outside of the, the joy con stuff, like I think like the level design is, is interesting and there's some, some moments where like, you know, you're having to think on the fly in some interesting ways and like, it's not just, you know, I don't know. You never know what these with platformers, sometimes it's just kind of like you, you cruise through. Sometimes they're a little too difficult. I feel like this is like striking a really good balance, yeah. uh, For and gets me to the flow. Right. For those that don't know where Pepper Grinder is, like the general premise is that yes. he plays this girl that's got like a giant drill. And yeah. she's like, I think she's a pirate or like pirate adjacent. She washes up on the shore at the beginning of the game and then all gets, the bad guys get... are pirates. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Well, they're like they're kind of like zombies, sort of. And they're like pirate zombies. I don't Wait, know. Zombies? Yeah. Is that what I don't know if I got zombies from them? I didn't get that. zombies from that. They're, they Maybe I'm. Because I I have finished it and like a little later oh, start okay. like coming out of the, the, those enemies okay. will like come out of the ground or like reform okay. a pile of skulls in the corner and stuff like that. Uh, okay, sure. Cool later. But yeah, you got a you got a big drill and it's almost like you're like platforming is jumping around and all the levels have like big pockets of sand that you're just drilling through and you can drill through like sand and earth and you're just like steering this drill and you're just like jumping from like earth patch to earth patch yeah. and collecting like jewels along the way like, you know, the launch yourself. is so fun yeah the launch feels really good yeah um kind of like in a i guess what like drill dozery kind of a way there okay. it's reminiscent of that uh a couple levels sort of. in rayman legends yeah a, yeah drill dozer's a, a game that i adore um and, and and won't shut up about um but but that's more like puzzly like it's you, you, it's more like you're trying to like figure out which exit you need to get into and then you'll sort of just go along a path. But this is yeah, like the swimming levels in Rayman are, are feel much more closer to this where it's like you have like full control and like you're sort of doing big sweeping circles inside the sand to like build up and launch out and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm about I finished the first world. I'm halfway through the second world right now. It's not a very long game from what I've heard from uh, yeah, it's four like, worlds. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'm like halfway through the game exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I I like it. I think it, like I said, I, I like the way the drill feels. I like that it it is has like a little bit of unwieldiness where it kind of challenges you to try to like keep on keep on the right path while also executing like some weird loopy loops and doing all these. Mm -hmm. Then when they introduce kind of like puzzly mechanics too, where it's like, oh, I gotta hit these switches in a specific sequence, so I gotta like find the right sort of path way through to like, okay, I need to unlock this 
this switch that's blocking my way, so I need to hit this other switch that flips it a certain way. But then if I want to get the collectible coins that are hidden out, uh, hidden through the stage, I might have to find another route to do all that at once. And yeah, it's just got a good flow state, which for a platformer is like super important, at least for me. Um, it's funny because like I, I think the actual platforming when you're not in the drill is like OK. Like I think the jump feels maybe a, like a tad stiff. Uh, but at least from what I played you're there aren't a ton of those times where you're like, I'm just hopping from platform to platform. Like you're almost always drilling through something, which is mm -hmm. nice. I'm, I'm glad they've kept the non drilling exploration to a minimum so far. Yeah. Uh, lean on your cool hook. You know? Yeah, it, it also feels like uh, those like non uh, drill segments. It almost just feels like okay, I'm getting to the next drill segment. Like that's I'm. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna hop for like four platforms, and you're drilling again. And then I'm back to <laughs> back to the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> exactly, yeah. which it is good stuff. Like I like the flow of it, and just like it feels really satisfying to like even just drill into enemies, and like when they're like in the ground, you just like sometimes you like go underneath them and plop them up in the air and kill them or that first boss fight where you're fighting the, the guy riding the beetle is was really fun and especially because it's like they have like the uh the button prompt where you're like drilling this giant beetle and you're telling you like to mash the shoulder button which is what you use to drill over and over and you just like feel that like oh you're grinding into them like it's got it's got good a good feel for everything yeah. and make it very satisfying they got the game feel down for sure um yeah yeah charles charles wrote the review for us and he he gave it an eight which feels about right for me like i'm probably about in the same zone in terms of having uh finished it but there's like some little things like some of the bosses i feel like the difficulty spikes a bit i, I actually quite struggled on that first boss marcus i don't know if, if you were in the same boat but I, not really took, okay i'm just i guess i'm just, maybe, I'm just, <laughs> maybe i was just having a hard time sorry but, to make like, you feel bad <laughs> no no I don't know. live live on air uh but uh so there's there's like some of the bosses like but then the second boss was like a first try situation so i've had i kind of like went back and forth with some some of the bosses but um mm. yeah overall overall like a solid indie platformer like in that zone of like gunbrella last year you know yeah i actually thought about gunbrella even though they're very different games but it's yeah, like no, they i mean they're both devolver yeah. joints too yeah pixelated platformers with like an interesting sort of traversal hook what if you combine both and you had an umbrella, a gunbrella, and a drill? Like, we need to get a crossover with these two. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty cool. They do yeah. seem, because they're both Devolver published, I do, it does seem like the kind of thing that where they would they would show up in each other's game in some way, <laughs> you know, at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been playing, not to, not to shift things very quickly, I apologize. Thanks. I've been playing a game called Summer House uh, in, in my evenings. Um, as a way to just like wind down um, Probably played it for a couple hours now uh, It's um, I'm <laughs> I did a Google search. I forgot there's a, uh, a Reality TV show called summer house um, That is not popping up on my my uh, my Google um, But yeah, this is this is published by future friends games They've actually got future friends has like an interesting lineup. They've got they're publishing the upcoming uh, Europa uh, Gordlitz. Yeah, she got delayed, by the way, recently. Mm -hmm. I miss that. It's come out. Yeah, it's supposed to come out this month. Now it's coming out, I think, in the summer. Okay. But they've got, like, an interesting lineup of, of games coming up. They're also doing that EXO Rally Championship oh, uh, yeah. situation. Um, but, yeah, so Summer House, all one word, um, if, you're, if you're looking to search for it. Uh, made by Friedemann. Uh, who has worked on a lot of games that actually have been popular on YouTube. Uh, I believe Friedemann worked on um, a couple games with uh, Johannes Tyler, I think their name is. Um, uh, I think like Islanders and that kind of thing. I think they kind of run in the same group, run, run same kind of developer circles, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, so Summer House is, it's, if people remember Townscaper, um, yeah. that kind of toy box city builder, uh, game, um, very much like not even like almost a game, but more of like a, a 3d sandbox, right. Um, that you just kind of like, like a creativity create, tool. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's what summer house is. Um, okay. there is like some, there are some like, uh, 
mechanics uh, in place to like help with like feeling progression and stuff. Um, but essentially, you are given like this blank slate. You can choose um, like a riverside town. You can choose um, uh, a few others. Um, you know, one that's more uh, urban looking. Um, there's like I think there's three or four of them, uh, and you are given a palette of building blocks it's all 2d well it, the camera is fixed to 2d but the objects are like 3d but they have like a pixel art texture so it's a cool look you get like some interesting shadows and depth going on despite this like pixel art look um and you are laying down like foundations of buildings you're adding doors and roofs and all sorts of like special decorations uh, and you're just making this little town for yourself. You don't, I mean, I guess you don't even have to necessarily make like a town. You can just make like one big house and just like make it hideous and ugly. But <laughs> when I'm playing this game, the fantasy I'm trying to realize is like making like this little miniature town. So I've got um, a hotel was like the first thing that I made. It's like this like cottage hotel uh, with like this really pretty mountain in the background. And as I'm like laying tiles down, uh, building this 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 house um, this building certain combinations unlock um, like new tiles like surprise they'll so let's say I played like two of these certain kinds of fences together and I made like a fence line and then all of a sudden it like this is really satisfying pop and now there's a character there like chilling out on the fence and so now I've unlocked <laughs> that that as like a tile so now I can like place that character on the fence uh, you know if i wanted to use it elsewhere or in another level uh, there's one where like i made like um uh little stone steps that led up to to my like uh the landing area of the hotel and suddenly like that combination now there's a dog there and he's chilling on the steps so there's a lot of interesting things um that add like animation and life to the world that you're building uh and and it's playful um, and, and it kind of sparks creativity, obviously, but also curiosity and like, okay, what combinations, yeah, I think you could even like go and look at like, what, oh, there's like, I'm missing these tiles. I really want this tile that looks like, is that a lady like drinking coffee or something? Let me go and try to figure out how to unlock that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but all in all, like the goal eventually is just like, yeah, you just have like this like toolbox, uh, to play with. Um, yeah, so I'm going to ask, like, are there any, like, as an, as like an objective focused player generally, mm -hmm. like, is there like a, no, like a object, I'm looking at the steam page and even a description just says, you know, while there are little secrets to uncover, there are no rules and you can't win or lose. Just chill out, build to your heart's content and soak up the atmosphere. So it's like, oh, okay, it's one of those of like, like yeah, I, absolutely. I, guess, I can see why you compared it to the towns, uh, townscaper before, like, okay, you just mess around and then occasionally like oh i found something but other than that it's like yeah just just build yeah it's kind of like digital legos right like yeah yeah well we already have narrative legos so <laughs> for oh. a digital equivalent for a long time yeah you're right yeah um yeah so it's just like it's been very relaxing honestly the there's like a lot of ambient tracks playing so you're feeling like I'm hearing nature and the soundtrack's really good. Yeah. Is um, it their music or is it just like sound? Yeah, like, there's music oh, okay. and sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and it just like everything has like a really nice pop and click to it when you place it. Um, and you can, one thing that's cool, since you're working with 3D objects, even though it all looks like pixel art, you can like move, you can layer things um, in interesting ways. And so you can uh, like offset things from like the x axis essentially um and like it gives more depth to the scene you can like layer you can place a wall and then using that you can like place a poster on the wall and then you could place bushes in front of it but it, it's it's it sounds uh very simple but because of like that pixel art uh look it feels a little no it feels kind of novel um mm -hmm. but I'm really enjoying it. I, I think it's five dollars on Steam. It runs on MacBook and Windows. Um, I, I it's one of my favorite things I've I've played this year. Nice. Uh, I just bought it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so I was like, oh, it's only five bucks. I'm gonna I'll mess around with this. Yeah, yeah like right, right now, this game. is like one of my favorite games I've played this year. And I know it's I, like very much like if you're a creative person, you like building things, or you like uh, you're a fan of nature. Uh, I think like this game. Uh, could be for you if you like playing games like minecraft or 
uh, The Sims and just turning on creative mode. I think this game is for you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really impressed with it. Um, and I think it it only took them, I think it was either six months or a year to make this game. It was really impressive. Mm, um, nice. Just another example of like doing a unique idea, taking it to market uh, in, a, in a shorter amount of time, you know, small idea, but... And now, I mean, it's it's overwhelmingly positive on Steam. They've got like a thousand reviews on Steam, which means they've got they've done pretty good amount of sales on this thing. Uh, I, I hope more developers follow suit and just do like weird stuff. Because um, like as we're talking about, it, it's like, yeah, it's, is it a game? I, like it, it's, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's cool. Uh, it's interactive. Uh, it, it's it's fun. So go check out Summer House. Uh, I definitely recommend it. I'm going to keep playing it. Um, I should, I should, they also have this really cool, one last thing, they have this really cool um, mechanic where you, you press the replay button and it'll like uh, delete everything and then like build it up. Um, like a time lapse? Kind time of? lapse, but like really poppy and clicky and like it just feels good. And you're like, oh wow, I did that. I did that. <laughs> um, so it's it's a cool game. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, but Marcus, Hi. you have been playing Open Roads. You reviewed yeah. it for us. Uh, I'm I'm kind of out of the loop on this one. I know Open Roads, I, but uh, I, I I didn't even realize it was already almost time to launch. Um, or it's out. I oh, it's out. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah. This is the Annapurna um, narrative game uh, by the Open Roads team, which is formerly um, Fulbright. Fulbright, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me about it. What, what's going on? So yeah, this game, like I said, formerly a Fulbright, who you mm -hmm. might know as the developer of Gone Home and Tacoma, which are two games that I, I like. Uh, so I've been looking forward to this for a while. It had been a long time coming. It was announced at the, the Game Awards in 2020. So a uh, hot minute. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> um, and yeah, the idea is that uh, it stars a uh, daughter and mother named uh, Tess is the daughter and Opal's the mother. Uh, who are voiced by uh, Caitlin Deaver voices the daughter Tess and uh, Carrie Russell voices Opal. So some 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 known Hollywood mm -hmm. actresses uh, who both do a good job in this game. And the idea is that um, like the setup is that because uh, you're playing as Tess and her grandmother slash Opal's mother has recently passed away and you're they were living with her, kind of taking care of her during her last years. And so now that she's gone, they're kind of in a um, rushing to move out of her home because it's been foreclosed. So they're trying to get out of there. And as they're sort of packing things up, they find a secret about her grandmother that, you know, I'm going to spoil. But basically, it sort of uh, flips their family history on their head a bit. And the only way to get more answers is to travel to a bunch of locations, which requires a good old fashioned road trip. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, so it, the, the probably the most uh, distinctive thing about this game is the art direction where like it like it, it's like 3D environments, like traditional kind of polygonal 3D environments. But mm -hmm. like Opal and Tess, who are the only two characters in the game that you see are flat 2D, like animated characters, like hand drawn animated. And they kind of, the way they're animated, it's not like full animation. It's almost, it reminds me of like an animatic. Okay. Uh, style where like they have like a few frames. So like as they're talking, they'll have like, their facial expression will change a few times, but it, it you know, they're- and Then it kind of sits there. Sync to the dialogue. Yeah. yeah, it'll sit a bit. And it looks nice. I, I do think it's sort of, um, I like for more like emotional, like dialogue or lines, I, I think it does sometimes- take a bit of the weight off of it just because like oh their face didn't change quick enough because like you know they're they're kind of like in one default ex uh expression from when the conversation started and then it took a turn to where maybe it didn't change fast enough or they're still locked in like okay opal's disgusted i think you know but then her voice is like shifted since then so there's yeah. like oh there's a bit of a disconnect there a little bit i i, I don't think it happens like super often but it's enough times where it became noticeable mm. and yeah, like, even though the game is built as a road trip, it, you're actually, like, I think you're in the car probably less often than you are exploring, where, like, uh, when you're not in the car, it's, like, first-person, like, gone-home style, basically, where you're just navigating these small little interiors that have all these 
and uh, objects that you can pick up and spin around in your hand like, oh, this is a cup. And, you know, sometimes it's just the cup where you're like, oh, OK. And then other times you'll get an, an item that's important and you'll prompt your mom to come over and say, hey, come here, let, let's talk about this. And then you'll just get some like some, you know, humorous or like emotional anecdotes about like, oh, yeah, like I found this picture of you as a mom, as a teenager working at like a, a roller skating like burger place. You know, tell me that that must have been embarrassing for you. And then they have a little chat about it and stuff like that. And I do think the dialogue and the back and forth is generally pretty good i i i i like the characters enough and the relationship between them which is like kind of contentious because there's like some there's there's like some things they push each other back on where like tess is about to go to college but she doesn't really want to she wants to focus on like her web design business um and you know opal's like no no, no you should go to college also uh you know opal is divorced from her husband which causes a lot of the friction because you get the sense that it was like a bad divorce, but like Tess is still really close with her dad. And so like you'll text them every now and then on a flip phone, by the way, because this game takes place in 2003, real okay. world 2003. So there's like real world references to things like 9-11. And yeah, and, I love and that because that, that is like like right making college decisions and stuff like that. that is exactly where i was in 2003 with my flip phone you know <laughs> like, exactly i was in fourth grade traumatized but oh my god oh thank you or no, I, I, 2003 make, make no i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i would have been in sixth grade still traumatized yeah, you're an adult then basically yeah, yeah you can't yeah. handle it <laughs> you're traumatized by the war in iraq at this point too yeah 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 which fair um yeah so, I mean, like, as someone else, I was in high school at that, at that time, probably like a sophomore or something, I think sounds right. Uh, so it was like a fun little time capsule of like, oh, there's some like visual imagery here that's like very evocative of the time. I mean, just the flip phone alone. Also, it makes me feel old that now the 2000s is you, it's a period piece now to do stuff. Yeah. The 2000s. <laughs> 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 They're like, oh, great. This is where we're at, huh? Um, and, and yeah, and there's like other threads that are like sort of like conflict of like, oh, you're talking to your best friend every now and then and seeing what's up with her. And then there's like a conversation you have with your mom where she talks about her best friend from high school that she lost touch with. And, you know, you can have, make dialogue choices along the way to be like, oh, you know, I won't lose touch with my best friend because we're too close. Or you could be like, you know what, that'll probably happen to us. But the thing about the dialogue choices is that they're not really impactful because you don't. There's you, you will never change Opal's mind about you. It's not that kind of game. There's not like multiple endings. You're not steering the story through different threads. It's like you're you're choosing which color to paint the house. You're not building a new kind of house. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, okay. yeah. So like you can be mean to your mom and she might say something like she might have an anger response of like, How, I can't believe you would say this to me. But like it's not going to change their overall dynamic. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so that takes some of the maybe the excitement for people that like choice driven games and to feel like they have agency over the story. This is not that kind of game. And I, I think that the narrative, my big sticking point with this game, cause I gave it a seven out of 10 in my review. And I am one of my big sort of problems with it is that it starts off really strong with all these different sort of narrative hooks of like, okay, family secret. Oh, okay. Like this thing with the dad and like, there's like a thing early on where like, like Tess bought a plane ticket to see their dad who lives in Nevada, but didn't tell their, her, her mom that she's basically going behind her back to go see him because she doesn't want him to see him. And she doesn't know the exact details for why they got divorced. So she's kind of basically circumventing her to go to him to get drama. Him. And <laughs> there's like other, and then there's like a thing where like Opal is up, has like some sort of like tension with her sister because she was she wouldn't help with the moving process from their grandmother and there's like some stuff there so they introduce these threads you're like okay i want to see where these go but like ultimately a lot of them don't really get resolved and are kind of left up in the air where and they mm -hmm. just kind of fall to the wayside where it's like teased like okay what happens with the sister and the mom and it's just sort of like the game basically say hey don't worry about it like i know we made this seem like it'd be a bigger thing it actually isn't it's just we're gonna push that to the side for a bit or if it if it does get, I don't even want to say resolved, but it just sort of gets like lip service at the end of uh, like, oh yeah, like we'll we'll talk about that later, but like mm, okay. not really. Like maybe Opal and Tess will talk about it. We the player will not be around for that conversation. So they're like, oh, okay. 
Um, and then I'm he, talking then, about stop trying to set up a franchise. Just tell a story. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then like the main the, the main narrative, I think there's some like revelations that make it less interesting as it goes. Hmm. Where like, again, it's it's I'm I'm talking around it because I don't want to get into specifics because the story is the king here. Like the gameplay hmm. is very minimal. Again, if you have played Gone Home, expect more or less that level of interactivity. It's like the story is what drives you. And then as you learn more about the main secret and what what is happening here, it starts to lose steam. It's like, oh, that's a less interesting res like reveal than I thought it would be. And then by the time you get to the end, you go, oh, that was it. <laughs> and that's kind of okay. like a bit of a, like, oh, that that was it. That was, was a much. I mean, I guess that's still kind of like like a wow, that's weird that that happened. But it's not this like earth shattering thing that it kind of starts out as which was kind of like at least for me a bit of a letdown and yeah it, it there's like a lot of that with the narrative threads of like oh it starts off with something and then it either peters out into nothing or you do get to the end of it and you're like oh okay maybe that wasn't as big a deal as it seemed like you guys were setting up to be that reminds me of uh firewatch a bit uh See, just like games that come from from like the gone home era yeah i mean Personally, I, I like Firewatch more than this game. I think Firewatch. Oh, I liked absolutely. Firewatch, but I yeah. think like the twist in that game maybe was or the secret wasn't as big as like it. Like it didn't for me. It didn't hit stick the landing. Sure, I would say at least for me, I think Firewatch hit harder than this game. Mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying, but I, I would still put that above of this just in terms of like the I guess the narrative and emotional impact. Mm -hmm. And I think this game has like some decent emotional moments between the the two characters where like and a lot of it is like on the side of like oh you pick up an object and they have an interesting conversation we're like oh okay i learned a little bit more about these two or they have like a touching moment or an argument where you're like okay i i can see both sides of this or whatever um but like it it, it feels like i i used in my review that in the headline that it feels like it's stuck in first gear where like every time it seems like things are gonna ratchet to the next level it sort of like eases off the gas a bit and sort of resets and goes like oh no no, no they're fine like, it seems like they just got into, like, a big fight. You're like, oh, man, they're in a big fight. We're just going to lead. And then immediately they're like, hey, we're fine. We, we patched this up really mm -hmm. quick. And you're like, oh, you patched it up quicker than it seemed like you would. Okay. And then we're just kind of moving on. And it's like there's times where it just kind of, like, it feels like it's pressing its head up against the ceiling but never actually shatters through it to, like, something really, really, like, engaging and gripping. And that was kind of my frustration with it because I kept waiting for it to get there. And it just it just didn't. Um, I, I think it's enjoyable. You know, like, I think if you want to chill out with like a just respectable narrative adventure and if you're like a fan of Fulbright stuff, it's like, yeah, play open roads. Why not? It's a short game. Like literally you get through it in like maybe two hours, you know, okay. depending on how thorough you are. If you decide to pick up every little cup and every little piece of paper and, and, and the few like the handful of levels there are, then, you know, maybe you'll put like three hours into it. But it just it, it felt it feels more tame and, and maybe like narratively less ambitious then it kind of like lets on that it was in the beginning like i think as when i think of the three games like gone home tacoma and this i think this hits like the weakest impact for me just story-wise okay uh so maybe that's why i yeah i just kind of walked away just like wanting more from it you know so like st hmm. strong hooks but then like kind of ultimately unsatisfying in the, in the end i guess right yeah it just kind of like starts trying then kind of like peters out and then just sort of like coast and levels for a bit but like little spikes in here are like oh and then you're like oh wait okay i guess that's nothing uh <laughs> so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. all right i probably not gonna play it but i am glad that uh the fulbright team stuck together throughout all the crap that they went through with yeah steve gainer and stuff yeah I'm, I'm glad this finally came out and i will say what i do like about it too is that it's a mother-daughter story which you don't really see in games in general like mm -hmm. that dynamic oh, isn't really represented of like yeah let's just see a mother and a daughter what is that relationship like it's very realistic like they feel like real people which i guess is a credit to the writing and to the performances of the actresses it's like refreshing in that sense it's like okay let me this is a lens i have no way you know I, i'm a guy so i have no way of like having any, any sense of like with this perspective on top of the cool sort of like period piece element of it too 
Um, so like you know, it's, I, it's like a unique insight, right? Like that we just yeah. don't really see in video games or like media in general. <laughs> yeah. Know. So like I said, the, the setup and everything around it, I think, is cool. And again, the presentation too. I just wish the story hit harder than it ultimately does. Right. Hmm. Yeah. That's too bad. All right. Well, uh, one more game I want to talk about, and then we can get into listener questions. Um, I checked out a game. Uh, I saw it. It might have been another screenshot Saturday joint. I don't remember. I uh, I might have also just been browsing Steam new releases. Um, it's a game called Stunt Paradise, and I'm gonna pull I gotta up look this thing up. I've never heard of this. Yeah, I wanna I wanna pull it up as well, so I can. I'm hoping uh, it's what I think it is. So I'll let you know if I'm disappointed by what it actually is. <laughs> so uh, well, the game where you do stunts, it looks like Marcus. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a. <laughs> It's developed by Brine Media. Um, they've put out a couple of games throughout the years. Uh, nothing that was like a big hit, I don't think. Okay. Um, this looks like Stuntman. So. Is it Stuntman? <laughs> it is. Um, I, I'm trying to. Th- this game is like very much like two, two friends like made this game, right? Uh, right. Doesn't have like. A huge following like at all I did want to shout it out because I think there's some some interesting stuff going on I was first attracted to it because like looking at the screenshots and the footage I'm like oh this looks like like a trials game but with a car right it does uh, yeah. and I at trials is one of my favorite game series I love tri- the trials games um, and I think that there is great I have not I've played the first couple of of levels um yeah and it has a demo now too oh cool cool okay yeah um well i'm trying to i'm beating around the bush about it i think this game looks really cool has a lot of promise but is currently based on my couple of missions way too easy um like as an experiment so so like (laughs) Because well, now you're speaking my language, because I think I made the joke in a recent episode that I was like, you're like, oh, I love trials. And I was like, yeah, I love trials, too. The first three levels. And then I fall off of trials. This might like, be for really you. Hard. This yeah. might be for you. Um, I think like as I've been thinking about this game more, I think like this could be a really cool introduction to that sort of genre for like younger audiences or people who are wanting um, way more chill experience. Like yeah, as an example, with the first boss of Pepper Grinder. Yeah, you, know? you can just say it, Alex. Yeah, as an example, I on one of the levels. I have not done this on every level, but I was like, I think I could just like hold down right trigger and I would be able to get through the entire level fine. And that's what I did. I literally just held down right trigger the entire time, and I got through the level. And I was like. <laughs> So there needs to be some tweaking. And I'm not saying that every level's like that. I think this game is cool. It's like there's a lot of like bombast and like cinematic moments where like you're being chased by the cops. Like it's not like a, a traditional level select, at least so far. It's like, oh, I finished that level. And now there's like a little cinematic sequence where I'm driving through like this front yard of this house. There's cops chasing me. And now it sets up the next stage. And like I'm going now on that. Um it's cool. I like it. I think uh, I want to keep trying. I want to keep playing it. If it gets harder, I think I would really like this um, because it's just like put a little toy, co- put a little car down there on some Hot Wheels tracks, put some spikes and some razor blades that go back and forth, you know, have some wacky physics and have a good time. That is like a recipe for success with me personally. For, did you ever play the stuntman games back in the day? I did Alex? not. No. Okay, because I was gonna like looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, is this more? Because you keep saying trials. Like, is it actually closer to trials or even something like Joe Danger than it is to? Oh, stuntman? I did play stuntman. I did play stuntman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it is much more akin to trials. Gotcha. Than okay. Stuntman. I I forgot about this game. Wow. Looking at screenshots. Okay, I totally played this game. Uh, also, I with with this game because like like if if you're just listening visualize trials truly right like paths and stuff like that except it's a car like the big thing about trials is like shifting your weight right yeah that's the whole game and are you is that what you're doing here as well that's what the game wants you to do okay um i think the physics system is not robust enough to like make it like worthwhile like the physics are just off uh like if they're going for like realism you know um 
and it just like ends up feeling it feels a little hollow compared to something like trials granted two i think like two people made this it's not like this big game like i wanted to shout it out i think it's like worth checking out i want, if, I want to check it out i might yeah I might it and and, and maybe you'll get farther than i have and you'll you'll say oh no like it, it does get challenging and to be fair like obviously the game's going to be easier at the start um but uh yeah i think i think i was seeing some things that didn't quite like they initially sold me on the vision and then wasn't quite what i was wanting in execution mm -hmm. um but again i think it's like fun um, and um, let me see how much it is on, on, uh, 799, 799. Yeah. Stunt paradise. Yeah. It came out March 21st. So recently it's on Xbox. It's on steam. It's on Nintendo switch. Ooh, switch. You say, uh, huh. Uh, huh. Mm -hmm. That's enticing. Yeah. So I, I do want to, I, I want to shout them out. I want to point people towards them. Cause I think it's, you know, not necessarily my exact cup of tea, but I still think it's cool. And I'm glad it was made, and I want to I want to point people to it. Um, it. Seems like a game that I don't. I'm looking at the features of it. I don't see it, but like this seems like ripe for like a track editor or something. That would be cool. Yeah, that would but be great. I'm, it's it's not that robust. I think it's like it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird game, man. But it's cool. I like that it exists. I want people to check it out. Maybe if you've always been interested in trials but you're scared of the challenge, try this thing out. <laughs> um, or no, no, just go for the vibes. Like, who cares if it's if it's not? I'm talking about earlier in the show playing a game that has really no purpose other than, like, me just <laughs> vibing <laughs> out. That's, so that's maybe that's that this way. game for you. Um, but, yeah, Stunt Paradise. I, did want to sh I wanted to shout them out. Cool. Yeah, worth checking out, I think. Uh, not going to blow your socks off, but uh, that also transitioning into... I've been playing a lot of trials uh, lately because I that game kind of wet my appetite and I was like, OK, I'm going to go play trials now. Which which trials? Uh, so trials fusion is my favorite, but I am playing through trials rising uh, right now on PC because I played it originally on switch. And if is people that the recent. One? Yes, it I, is. I get, yes, like, it is. Okay, I get the trials lineage when trials rising launched. There was a lot of talk about like because it came to the switch, but the switch has like those trigger buttons and they're not actual triggers and with trials it's all about like you want to like feather you know the accelerator to like get the physics right like you really want like an actual trigger and so it was weird honestly on switch because like yeah it just isn't, isn't made for like that button you need that that uh what's the word like is it an accelerometer is that right i don't know sure, sure. yeah we'll say that <laughs> um, you need that pressure and you need that, that control over it. Yeah. Um, and so I've recently gone back and also trials rising kind of got canned cause it was like, it was definitely Ubisoft, uh, There's like a lot of free to play stuff, a lot of free to play right? stuff in that one. Yeah. The kind of sour being a premium game, right? Like you yeah. paid a premium price and then exactly. it was like a lot of stuff with loot hidden. boxes and that kind yeah. of thing. So the but, rising yeah. meant rising microtransactions. Yeah. Like, rising. Yeah. yeah inflation. The longer you play. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> but, but that really bummed me out. Cause I, yeah, me too. first trials on. 360 Xbox Live Arcade mm -hmm. was like one of those just like yeah. revelations of Trials HD game. technically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first, yeah. The first I would love for them to re-release that on on modern platforms. Yeah, yeah. just kind of like a lot back of, basics, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people don't know or forget that the first Trials was like a Java or Flash game from like 2000 and that the one that we associate with trials like hd was just an hd remake of that game mm. yeah yeah but for a lot of people i mean so featuring the cast trials. of jackass weirdly like they were like just they did all the grunts and screams and stuff oh <laughs> wow very weird I, I didn't know that piece of trivia um but yeah i just i was in the mood for trials i there's really no game that does trials like like i'm desperate for red links to come back and bring us another one but they're probably have you, have you working. Joe Danger? No, I haven't. Yeah, I was, was going to say Joe might, Danger's. Yeah. Joe it's, Danger? It's that school. It's not as hard as Trials. Um, but, yeah. you know, that's like, it's so funny to look at that and then look at No Man's Sky and you're just like, weird. But Oh, I <laughs> forgot that this is Hello on. Games. Okay. Yeah. I uh, See, yeah, I love cool. yeah, yeah. I love games like that. I love Excite Bike. I love, I mean, it's like, it's like Excite Bike and Trials is like two of my favorite, you know, formulas. 
Yeah. I've never played Joe Danger. I I feel like an idiot because I know I knew I known the name Joe Danger. I knew Hello Games worked on Joe Danger. I never actually like realized what Joe Danger was. Uh, I think I'd always confuse it with Beautiful Joe. Um, in my brain <laughs> growing up, Joe Danger. yeah, I play Beautiful Joe Danger. Yeah, Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, I those two, those Joe Danger games are good. I do you guys think we will like get ever um a new Excite Bike or a new Joe Danger, or which one do you think would be more likely to happen? Excite Bike, yeah, with a bullet, yeah. Even though okay, even though it's been how long? I don't think I mean, no. I don't think Hello Games is going back to Joe Danger. No. You know, they, no. Even as like a small little in between thing, do you think they're done? They did one of those, and it wasn't Joe Danger. So, <laughs> Last Campfire. Wait, oh, right. I was gonna say, whoops. I, I like the Last Campfire. I, Wait, is I Joe Danger only game. a mobile? Yeah, is it a mobile too. game? Yeah. No, 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 no. It was console. It was console. Okay. Yeah, I played it on uh, 360. I think that was like, like a weird little indie whatever they campfire games. The, hmm. it, it was like. Like, wasn't that the name of the... It was, like, the team within... No, uh, uh, oh, within Hello Games? With, yeah, like, Campfire Games, I think is what they're called. Yeah, that sounds right, yeah. But, I mean, they... they're they And Joe Danger, like... I don't think they look at it as, like, this really, um, like, iconic character that they could, like, return to someday. I don't think anyone's shouting at... Hel tweeting at Hello Games about uh, when are you going to bring Joe Danger back. But I could be totally wrong about that. I'm I'm sure yeah. it has its super. Fans. I like the second game, especially the movie one. The movie I like them thing. both. Yeah, yeah. but it, it was funny because it's like it was a lot of former uh, developers from Burnout, right? Like Burnout Three and Burnout Paradise, even maybe. Hmm. And they branched off and made Hello Games and released two Joe Danger games, and then, you know, then it was No Man's Sky time. They're like, yeah. We're, <laughs> this is going to be our legacy <laughs> now for the rest of eternity. Have they ever? I haven't kept up with every No Man's Sky update. Have they ever just added Joe Danger to No Man's Sky, like as a skin or anything like that, <laughs> like any kind of crossover whatsoever? <laughs> there was an article back when I remember the big question. Uh, I don't know. I guess there was a big question for No Man's Sky is like, what happens when you reach the center of the universe? Yeah, you know, and like my. Joe we, Danger's there. Form, we, yeah, go up to Game Informer. We wrote an article that was like, "What is what does everyone on staff think is in the center of the universe of No Man's Sky?" And I think my joke answer was like a Joe Danger sequel, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Joe Danger Three is in the Just middle a full of No Man's Joe Sky. Joe Danger game. Yeah, like well, frog, I, really like Frog Fractions. Yeah. <laughs> Before we move on, I do want to shout out Trials Rising. I think there's some really good tracks in that one. Okay. Um, I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, there's like a medieval track in that one. I forget the name of it. That's really good. I did write down Canyon Lands, I think, uh, is one of the early. I wrote it down. I have like a running list of like uh, favorite ye levels in games. Yellowstone Caldera. Uh, that's in Trials Rising. That's a really good opening opening level. Really freaking good. Uh -huh. But yeah. yeah, this is my plea to Ubisoft. Please give us more Trials games. I think there's enough. Did you know I was looking at the Trials wiki and I didn't there's realize enough. that there's 16 <laughs> Trials games. What? Uh, Half of them are spinoffs, granted, of like Trials Construction Yard. Okay. Some of these were like pre, this was still in the Flash days of, hmm. of Trials. Oh, oh like, yeah. Does that games. count? I'm, yes. Then this, it's, it's got Trials in front of it. So Trials Construction Yard, Trials Dynamite Tumble, <laughs> Trials Legends. You know, I, so. hmm. I often considered uh, the Blood Dragon Trials. I thought would be a good one to play because, like, it has like a story. And I was like, I was like, oh, that might be fun that it has like a trajectory where you you make your way towards a conclusion. Because otherwise, Trials is typically like, I don't think there's really a story to Trials. Maybe I'm a lunatic, and there is, of course, there's a story. But like, I was traditionally like, now a series of Trials. You know, yeah, they like in Trials Rising. There's like, uh, you know. It's kind of a story if you want to call it that like there's like a guy guiding you through the levels who's it's like now we're going to go and unlock this uh this competition like but not an actual story yeah i mean if i if i were to do a story for trials it would be every 80s like extreme sport coming of age movie where it's like a guy or a kid that's really good at mountain biking doing stunts and then he has to win a stunt competition to save the community center. And then his father <laughs> forbids him from doing it because he's like the uptight. I work in a factory, dad. And then you realize he also was a trials champion until. Are you just describing happened. the premise of motocrossed? 
I'm, on Disney Channel. I mean, if it's that, it's like multiple movies are that. <laughs> I, I'm looking up. I'm looking up trial, Trials of the Blood Dragon. It's called because the whole deal with Blood Dragon is like, hey, isn't the '80s crazy? You know, like that's that's what Blood Dragon is. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is the story. You know, <laughs> wait till we get a again since the 2000s is now ripe for period pieces we need a blood dragon that's just the 2000s like i don't know what you call yeah. it but it's like man the 2000s were crazy right i mean that might be the netflix show i have no idea <laughs> i've not watched the netflix <laughs> it's blood just dragon show. 2003 <laughs> yeah for all we know that's what it could be the other thing about blood trials of the blood dragon is there's a grappling hook which is like that sounds funky you know yeah. there's stealth and sequences like this sounds like a weird hooks. styles game yeah, I remember in the 80s, everybody had a grappling hook. It was a really mm. big part of the decade. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that man, the others. Yeah, uh, average yeah. people. That's just how we got around back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well. We found a better way. We have found a better way. Uh, let's get into housekeeping real quick. Before we get to listener questions, which uh, we have some really good ones this week. Um, don't forget, you can get a print magazine subscription at GameInformer.com slash magazine. Or if you want to go straight to the source, subscribe.gameinformer.com. That'll get you to the landing oh, page. It's subscription.gameinformer.com. Oh, shoot. Subscription.gameinformer.com. Actually, maybe it is subscribe as well. I don't know. Let's check. I'm going to... It's a subscription. <clears throat> it's definitely oh, no. a subscription. I'm just wondering if also subscribe.gameinformer.com. Uh, both work. Both work. They both work. Okay, yep, great. Yep. Perfect. I thought that might be the case. I was like, I swear I've been putting in subscribe. Uh, <laughs> subscribe.gameinformer.com or subscription.gameinformer.com. Whatever you like, whichever one you want to spell out, um, that'll take you to the landing page. We are running a sale right now. You can get your first year for $19.91. That's 10 issues delivered to your mailbox. Uh, if you want to sign up for two years, uh, you can get ten dollars off, uh, and uh, it'll be thirty four ninety nine for two years. That's twenty issues delivered to your mailbox. You can also gift a subscription if you have one and want a friend or a family member uh, to check out Game Informer. You can gift a subscription, and of course, all of those come with access to the digital version of the magazine. It's the best way to honestly show our parent company our worth as Game Informer. Uh, as well as to support, you know, the daily news, the videos, the podcasts, the reviews, the previews, all that free content we put out. Um, this is a great. This is the best way to support yeah. it um, and to keep it. And going. the magazine's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's great to have a physical magazine. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it rules. I was just this reading mine you. yesterday. This could be you. Look at this. I was just reading that cover story yesterday. The No Rest for the Wicked cover oh, story. So happy. I wrote that. that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Look great those, work, Marcus. Look at all those words Marcus wrote. That's yeah, crazy. please read That's a them. lot of words. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of work went into that. Look, uh, here's some words I wrote about Stellar Blade. <laughs> yeah, wow. No, but for real, that is uh, the best way to support us. Yes. Uh, Subscription.gameinformer.com. Uh, go sign up, please. Uh, and while you're on that URL, that browser, go on over there to twitch.tv slash gameinformer. Uh, where you can follow us. We stream replay every Friday, Super Replay, rather, every Friday at 2 p.m. where we replay a game in its entirety. Um, and uh, we are currently uh, in the midst of our Majora's Mask Super Replay. Uh, that seems to be going well every week. Uh, we also stream yeah. throughout the week. We are now, we're streaming this episode, this this podcast episode, live on Twitch uh hello record wn and chat they just ordered their ordered my year over the weekend thank you yeah. uh rogue saint and chat saying i'm so glad the print magazine is still around thank you appreciate that rogue saint uh holly spice wolf chinglini a lot of folks in chat um watching this live so you can go and do that by following us over on twitch twitch.tv slash game informer uh, and then a couple more plugs, and then I promise we're, we're done. Uh, YouTube.com slash Game Informer. We put up all of our new gameplay today episodes, our cover story videos, video reviews. Uh, we got a lot of cool like video features coming up that I've been working on that are going to be dropping uh, later this week. Uh, so YouTube.com slash Game Informer. Uh, and I think 
that's going to do it. Just give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Matt Storm, our podcast editor. Uh, they also go by DJ Stormageddon sometimes. They're a podcaster in their own right. Uh, they host the Fun and Games podcast, which is uh, a general gaming podcast. And then a Bioware focused podcast uh, called Reignite. Uh, so go listen to those. Uh, give our friend Matt uh, a big old thank you for, for making this show um, easier to produce every week. All right, listener questions. If you want to be involved, uh, you can get involved by joining our Discord, which you get access to uh, by subscribing to us on Twitch one time. Uh, and then you can leave a, a comment. Marcus usually does a call for questions. Um, and uh, you can get your questions in for the show. If you don't want to use Discord, you can email us, podcast at gameinformer.com, podcast at gameinformer.com. Uh, with the subject line game informer show question and uh, we will we will see it and we will consider it and it will probably be added to the show notes Um, so yeah Uh, first question this week comes from chain whippin on discord chain says hey guys how excited are you that silksong got a real xbox page and what do we think it means in regards to the game's long development Uh, oh for those that don't know there was an april fool's joke yesterday about a hollow knight silk song nintendo direct yeah that i forget was that team cherry that put that out or was that no that, no it was, it was just, definitely it was not just somebody, yeah it was okay just yeah yeah but like on the back of that was like the actual xbox store listing did go a live, legitimate one. not a joke yeah <laughs> so he, and uh, they got an esrb rating too so yeah like, oh that means it might be coming soon then right i think yeah. the esrb thing is much bigger than the store page because my friend Eric, friend of the show, Eric Van Allen at Destructoid, I was talking to him about this, and he was like, I actually think, like, Silk Song has had a store page on, like, Nintendo and PlayStation for ages. Yeah, sure it has. Yeah, Steam, um, too. Yeah, Steam, yeah, yeah, yeah. For ages now. I think the ESRB thing is, like, the big thing. It's like, oh, okay. You're, like, at that point where you're submitting for, for ESRB. I assume CERT is soon to follow after that, I hope. I don't know. Uh... And I will say my my excitement level is completely unchanged, if I'm being honest. Yeah, like me too. <laughs> I, it's, it doesn't mean a lot to me. Yeah. I, like, but that what that what I'm saying is like, it's a game that it's like, I will be excited when it has like a solid release date and we know when it's coming or I'm actively playing it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it does seem like at this point, it's primed for like a shadow drop situation on some Xbox stream or something. Um, it is interesting that they were the last ones to get the store page because remember they were the ones that last showed it right we're like wasn't it that real where they were like hey all these games you just saw they're gonna be out within the next year and then that year. completely fell apart with like <laughs> half of the games that were shown <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah i forgot I mean, it's been a year since that video the esrb sort of rating that hopefully soon uh, that would be exciting yeah I'm yeah ready for it uh, Although I did just finish Prince of Persia last night, uh, so, you're, so like I, which, you're, which I loved, I thought it was fantastic. You're a little but tired little, out. Like I, I can wait a little while for another sort of explore map, a search, yeah. a search and jump. If you a will. search I, and jump, yes. I suspect that Team Cherry will oblige you, Kyle. I don't think this <laughs> yeah. is coming out even in the next couple of months. So. Right. Uh, Jonah Abraham uh, writes in: Do you think we'll ever have a new contender in the console space? Since the early 2000s, the same three companies have controlled the vast majority of the console market share. Will that ever change? And if so, what is the most likely company to enter? Oh, man. Uh, I, I think feel like I think there's Stadia going to be attempts. Had, yeah. The Stadia Amico, had baby. the most. Oh, I'm sorry. Marcus, what'd you say? Uh, the Amico. Um, everyone's Amico. favorite. Yeah, I hate. Hey, would that thing? I will buy an Amico. I want to try that thing. That thing looks weird. But I think. <laughs> I think Google and Stadia had the most potential to to be that, right? And and even Amazon to a certain degree yeah. of like if anyone was going to do it, if anyone was going to fund an exclusive that was like truly phenomenal and you could only play it like on a non Microsoft, Sony or Nintendo platform, it would have been Google or or Amazon. And I guess Amazon's still kind of in the game, but like I think like if I were sort of an executive, like an insane executive person at Google, 
I would have been like, this is all great. I'm glad this is working. We do not release this thing to the public until we have like what is the best game ever that we've been working on for the last eight years to launch it with. Like yeah. there has to be a game you can only play on Stadia that everybody wants to play. There has to be a Breath of the Wild on Switch. There has to be a Halo one on Xbox to get this thing. People excited about it. You know? Yeah, I'm and, just trying to think of like the powerhouses at this point who would even have like the cachet to dip into. Yeah, I think even Stadia that's what I was saying, was, Google. Like that's who else has Well, well I was thinking of the game space and I don't yeah, think they have enough yeah, money yeah. to fund it, but or maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm ignorant on that. But and even then Capcom was, is like one that yeah, that's interesting. That yeah. I could see like a Capcom I don't oh, think no. that's happening, but like out of the big publishers, like who's consistently like hitting it out of the park right now. Uh, and has like a wide array of experiences. I mean, if Elden Ring Two was a From Box <laughs> exclusive, you know, by the From Box. From Box. <laughs> I don't like the way that sounds coming out of my mouth. I mean, From Software sounds weird too. So I guess they're, they're Box. <laughs> the from sound Box. Weird. If they were to make, if From Software made a console, it has to be like some weird draconian console, or it's like <laughs> yeah. really hard to use for some reason. Like you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, look at it. Ugh. I think we're locked in with these three for a very long time. I think yeah. there will be, there could be, maybe Apple or Amazon or not Amazon. Apple or Netflix could maybe make like a little, oh yeah, little yeah. device. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. think they would I, make. I, I, I think about tech companies that already make physical platforms because that's the thing it's like a home console where it's like google didn't make a console they made a oh, okay that's they, a good they, point they circumvented the whole like because that's a lot of money to do like supply lines and manufacturing factories and chips and all that stuff like who what do you are, call this marcus oh i guess they did make a controller <laughs> and yeah i, I do I have a hundred i've got a founder's controller around here somewhere but uh but i mean you know what i mean right like and like, oh yeah, that's you know, a lot absolutely. of extra money on top of just getting a store off the ground, right? Yes. And like Apple yeah. already does that, so they they would just have to spend more money that they absolutely have. And they want to sell you iPhones, not game consoles. At least for now, I mean. But then they, I guess they technically it's not a game console, but like their platforms play games and have like the App Store, is Apple TV, that kind of thing, games yeah. Market. So if they for. On one hand, you could argue they don't need to, because especially now that their phones are powerful enough to run AAA console games like Resident Evil and and Death Stranding yeah. just came to it. Uh, if they're going to do anything, now. they need like a first party, like peripheral controller. Yeah, because it's like they could just keep selling like, here's a really good iPad. It's going to run Elden Ring just fine. You know, here's and now we just have a, our own proprietary controller that for whatever reason, you know, like, again, if they wanted something to call their own and not just be content, we're like, yeah, you can use other people's controllers on our stuff. We don't care. Uh, but if they were like, here's the Apple controller, which I would like to see yeah. that just because I'm a fan of weird controllers. Uh, but out of this, everyone, Apple feels the most likely because they are they already make they make physical things anyway that play games. You know what I mean? Yeah, could they like because they have Apple TV, right, which you can play Apple Arcade games on. Every Apple Arcade game is is required to also be compatible with an Apple TV. Um, so like if they release like Apple TV game or something, right, like this is the gaming Apple TV that came with a controller. It would still take some crazy exclusive game. You know? I mean, I do want to shout out. I know we're not talking about like consoles at this point, but like there are like smaller players in the game making interesting things like the play date yeah. uh, is really yeah. interesting, you know, and still I'm getting right games. Here. Yeah. Uh, what? I just want it backlit. Just that's all I uh, need. I just need it backlit. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Mars after midnight just came out. Yep. I know there's yeah, that that's, other. That's why, uh, I have it. that's why I have it on my desk handy. Yeah. I yeah. Put yeah. Mars yeah. After it's midnight. the Mars after midnight machine. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I mean, that is tr uh, truly an exclusive that it's like. Yeah. I mean, I think the play date. Charts. I I charged my playdate and 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 like got it updated and bought uh, Mars After Midnight because it's like it's an experience I can only get on playdate. Like yeah. I can't play that thing anywhere else, you know. Which is like enough for me. I love an exclusive. Like you can only like I I I played Guilt on Google Google Stadia because I was like I can't play exactly. this anywhere else. Like this is the only place I can play this, and that was enough to get me in the door. I feel like Kyle, you and I are the only two that play Guilt on Stadia now. <laughs> now that it's, it's a everywhere solid else. Game. Cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 
the idea of like teasing Capcom or like another game maker making a console feels so weird now. I feel like nobody. No, it doesn't make sense. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Like even if they could. I, I think if anybody like, was going to, it would have been like Activision Blizzard, mm-hmm. uh, and now they're purchased by Microsoft. So. Yeah, that'd be funny. It'd be weird if they just made their own box while being owned by Xbox, yeah. like competing with their parent yeah. company. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad. I'm, like on the one hand, I'm glad. I do want. I would love for someone to try it. Like I would love to someone get in there and sort of mix things up. Like that. We were hopeful for Ouya. All right, like, get back yeah. in there, Sega. Yeah, remember, uh, yeah. Steam, tr- remember Steam machines when Steam kind of yeah. tried to do it with like, hey, these are PCs that are very nebulous in terms of like selection of like well, what is a steam machine it's everything there's so yeah. many yeah. types that are considered you know, a steam machine i could see like again a lot of these handhelds that are coming into play what we're really talking about here is like somebody making a new platform exactly. because like a, a box that you plug into your tv and yeah it. like there are plenty of like uh, there are plenty of like new pieces of hardware like that play with Steam, like all these like Steam handhelds that are coming out and Windows handhelds. Like those are all new. Like yeah. Com- but maybe that's com- just the. Maybe that is the mistake we're thinking of. Maybe that's because even now with the console space, like hearing the reports of like growth not happening the way it used to with consoles of like not enough new people are buying consoles. It's more existing customers just upgrading to the next console but not as many people being like this is my first playstation or this is my first xbox for the first time and figuring trying to figure out how do you get those people and even then like you know xbox obviously is a distant third at the moment and yeah i I, the doom and gloom about like they're getting out of console market i I don't buy that but it's still just like oh they're not they're doing fine but they're not doing like they're, they're not doing nearly as well as like Nintendo and, and Sony. So even then it's like the idea of trying to enter that space when it's already looking like two people are like very much dominating. It. And the third one is like, they're doing fine, but still just like, I, they're hanging they're out. Not, they're probably <laughs> not going to catch up. Like at this point, they're not yeah, catching up. No, yeah, um, no. <laughs> maybe ever again. And, pro- and honestly, I think people forget that Xbox is really only rocking one generation out, out of the four that they had. So that was more the exception than the rule. Yeah. Uh, good point. So when you look at that, do you again as a company, you're like, do I really want to throw my name in that hat? And at least in a traditional sense, or do you? Is it make more sense to just not do a box that plugs into a TV if you're trying to have your own platform and you do a Stadia or you do like a here's a dongle that connects to your TV and that's where the games are. Yeah, I mean, know? especially with the trend like a lot of the platform holders are bringing their games to the other platforms now, like, cause there's more money to be made there. It's, it's kind of yeah, silly I mean, to get into the hardware game budgets ballooning. It's like you, exclusives being less appealing financially. Cause yeah. Exclusives aren't sustainable in the long run. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, especially like the Sony style, like hundreds of million dollar yeah. single player thing. Where 500 like, million. Even if they sell super well, it's still not enough now, you know? So they're like, well, we got to put this somewhere else to get that money back which is, you know, that's a whole other problem. <laughs> but yeah. it is something you have to consider for, like, I'm going to make a console. Like, okay, well, I should have console exclusives. They're like, right, do you want to do that? <laughs> do you <wanna?" laughs> yeah, yeah, especially yeah. for, like, a new thing that you got to convince people to buy. But at the end of the day, I think the answer is Soldier Boy. He'll figure it out. <laughs> that's right. Oh, you're he's right. Damn. I, I forgot. That code yep. for years. He He'll has. He'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's only a matter of time. I can't believe you just said that. I forgot about that. Uh, Derek on Discord asks, what is next for the handheld market? Switch did joining your handheld with your TV. Deck gave us a PC in your hands. And mobile games have gotcha galore. What kind of new features would need to come out in order for a new handheld to feel really original? Original? Because that's like the play date feels original. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's got a big crank. That's different. Um, I'm, what... Original doesn't always mean good necessarily. Like you can, I could slap a, a deep fryer on a handheld and be like, well, no one's done that before. Is it a good idea? Who cares? It's it's different. I uh, I actually would like Switch to, to kind in a weird way. Be, it's sort of throwback to the Wii U, right? Where in the sense of like, let's like, is there a technological way that we could? Uh, basically do what the Wii U did, but with the Switch, right? Where you can fully take it remote, but when you are playing at home, 
you have two screens that interact with each other, right? Because oh, like right just now, broadcast the other. Well, yeah, right now all it does is broadcast, right? Like I oh, want, right, right. I want like two different screens again. Like I want some like, like, but it, but it, because the thing about the Wii U is like the the tablet was like, oh, I can play games handheld. I can play console games handheld, but you were still tethered to your living room, right? You still had to have that box. And right. I want, I want a middle ground between Switch and Wii U, where it's like you have the interesting gameplay mechanics of some of the Wii U's most interesting games, like Nintendo Land and stuff. But you, you are not tethered to your living room. You can still take the Switch console out of your house and use it as you would a traditional Switch. So in a weird way, I want like a half step back and a half step forward <laughs> for Nintendo. Didn't mm. we go through that phase in like 2014 when like everyone was obsessed with second screen experiences? Yeah, yeah. Like the, but it was, was it mostly magic? phones and stuff like, hey, yeah. you, can, you can play the game on your TV, but you can kind of keep playing it on your phone and... I yeah, just, it's it's I a mean, weird thing I was thinking about recently because like I, there's a feature of the Wii U that was silly, admittedly, but I liked where you could you could um you could put up curtains on your television and browse the internet on the gamepad, right? So you could be like, hey guys, I want to show you this YouTube video, and then the browsing oh, would happen yeah. on the tablet, but you would keep curtains on the TV, and it's like, all right, I found the YouTube video, I'm gonna press the curtains button. I and love the curtains that actually. Would open. Yeah, and it's I like, forgot about that. That was. And cool. I was thinking about it. I was like, could you do that? Brought because I broadcast my phone to my television sometimes to just like you know watch a YouTube video or something, and I was like, but it's always gonna be a copy of what's on the screen in my hand, and Switch right. included, right? It's always gonna be like the th what's on the screen can go on the big screen, but I want two different things i want to be able to do something on my like i'm like playing jackbox games like right like i want to do something on my my tablet or phone or whatever that does something different on the tv which is like we have a hundred percent done this this is not a new idea a lot of stuff has tried this but none of it's really clicked i just like there was there was interesting stuff on the wii u that did not click with everybody that i want nintendo to try again but i still want the switch 2 to be a functional you know double system mm. i just want everything give it to all to me give bring me back uh street pass yeah that yes genuinely I mean, that's, yes that's probably the best handheld mechanic ever yeah <laughs> like, i really did i was so into street pass yeah uh, i still bring mine to conventions when i go do you, still get stuff? Do, you do you still get yeah. stuff do people show up only okay. at conventions cool. uh, that makes sense yeah okay because people cool. like Zeon over at nintendo life you know, have like their little campaigns going on to bring back Street Pass or whatever. Uh, so I, I, I participate. I bring it around. I think um, I think what I just want is more powerful and smaller. So not yeah. innovation, just better version, better, for, more portable version of what for cheaper. Yeah, yep. I want that too. And cheaper too. <laughs> yeah, I do want. I would like the big upgrade I want for my Steam Deck is to cut the weight in half. Like that's that's the main thing I want at this point, you know. Absolutely. Like they did, they did Steam Deck OLED, and I was, and apparently it's got like a little bit of a better refresh rate. And I was like, I just need it lighter. Like that's the, all I really want, just lighter. That little lighter smaller, and a lighter. little smaller. Yeah, because it like that's when I, I pack my Steam Deck, Deck in my backpack, and I've got like a camera backpack, so like I can pull the sides open and like put stuff in slots. The Steam Deck like pushes still even then pushes like the outside of my backpack like when it's in its case because it's so massive. Yeah, I think the first time I saw back. a Steam Deck was yours, Alex, when we went to Osaka mm. and we were in the airport. And I remember even being a take, but I was like, I knew this thing was big, but this is like a weapon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know how big this thing really is. Yeah. yeah. Also, offset the thumbsticks. I don't yeah. like where they are, like up at the top. Offset the thumbsticks. So you prefer the sort of Xbox approach? It's objectively the best way to do thumbsticks. Just to soft set them. Okay. Like, I don't mind it on PlayStation. Like, I'd rather if if I, I don't like them on the Steam Deck where they're right at the top. It, either put them at the bottom like PlayStation or just the best option offset them. I'm just imagining yeah. playing the Steam Deck <laughs> with off with like sticks below. You just physically I mean, could you not grip have it. To change the form factor too to make it seem yeah. so that it works. Yeah, you literally could not grip. You have to have them up here. Yeah, the the Steam Deck. It's mini. like okay, up here, but then oh god, that feels awful. <laughs> <laughs> I want a a handheld that can also be a VR headset. I'm just gonna go for wild tech innovation. I've like, I've said this this idea countless times on the show. You've already told me it's a good idea. I want to be able to, whatever console I'm talking about, I want to be able to just set my controller 
on top of it and it just starts char charging. That exists all on top of the console or just yeah. like a the console. Okay, so now I thought you meant like a charge pad. It's like that exists. But no, but I want it just like the top of the console or. That seems like that would be a nightmare for like power consumption. <laughs> Because <laughs> would it be draining power from the console so that if you tried to play the handheld, it has no battery because it charged oh. your controller? I mean, you're just talking about, like, what is it called where you, where you have, like, a mat that you put your phone on? Yeah. Right? yeah but you're saying you the console acts like that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, right? like, you're done playing, you put the controller on, and you always have a charged controller. Yeah. And you always know where your controller is. You don't lose. Yeah. But the handheld is the charger. I'm I'm getting away from the handheld. I'm not <laughs> okay. So you're just but, saying, okay. I'm gonna say like I'm just saying in general. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. I, yeah, I think that's a cool idea. Lost yeah. the plot. Um, Troidal Power on Discord asks, uh, which iconic video game hat, helmet, or headgear would you most like to wear nonstop for twelve days and twelve hours? Oh, probably something you can eat out of, I guess. Because <laughs> Master Chief comes on, he's got a cool helmet, but you're like, so I can't take it off. Is I guess that's the implication. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, and I guess I, you got to sleep in it too. But like, I, like my my initial answer is Cappy from Odyssey. Mm. Like, do I get to use the functions of Cappy? For I think so. I so think I can. I, I hope so. To, yeah, because otherwise it just whatever. comes down to style. Just transform into by throwing my hat at it. Well, I guess does that break the rule of taking it off? That's yeah. I guess that's. Like, oh like, yeah, like, yeah. You so, get Cappy as a as a companion, but I guess yeah. you can't use it. You just have a buddy. <laughs> What's up, Which Cap? I guess your I life want... would be normal, but you just got a talking. <laughs> I want the Saiyan, uh, the Saiyan eyepiece. Oh, that'd be good. The that Power counts. Reader. Wait, is that video games or the DBZ thinking? games? Yeah. Okay, sure. I guess we'll I cheese that. Know. I was gonna say Batman. Cheese that? Was what? That Come on. <laughs> Uh, I mean, a power, a scouter where you can read everyone's mm -hmm. fighting power would be. You need, and then you can. I mean, that's just like Apple Vision Pro. Know, like, oh, We're just take this guy. The I scouter know, is just Apple Vision Pro. Ultimately, it would serve zero function for me. I'm not looking to pick fights with anybody. It yeah. would just be like, oh, that oh okay. Oh, that oh, guy. Someone, oh. oh. <laughs> or if someone picks fights with you, mm -hmm. you're less intimidated because you're like you're like a three dude and you're like running your mouth you're like I yeah <laughs> or like your friend who's always saying he's six foot but he's really five ten you can be like sorry man scouter picked you up five ten and power level like, two on the 13th day you can rip it off your head and crush it in anger yeah you met someone that was just too strong <laughs> very like, cinematic oh I mean, but if, but if you say over nine thousand, you just you're ejected into the sun immediately. You have to avoid that temptation. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone on Earth is over nine thousand. So I'm just saying you can't say it if you're wearing the scouter. But not even as a joke. You, no, yeah, you can't no. say it. Like if you say it, you we don't want this to be cornball. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be cool. Right. Only cool people wear the Those big giant cool. eyepieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that why we we looked at people that wore Google Glass with such admiration? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Those cool dudes over there. Uh, I just want a Troidal Power. I just want an Apple Vision Pro. If you want to buy me one of those, I'm probably not going to use it that much. But I just want to. I want to see. That I want to see the count. potential. That's the that doesn't count. Come on. And I can I'm have really Apple stuff. Arcade on my head. The uh, the Apple stores will like they'll go and get, give you a. a uh, they'll like walk you through it. Like they'll let you try one. Which has, I don't want to. I don't do. I don't trust that. But I'd yeah, buy all the people sweat and germs. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's true. But I just because like, I don't think I need one or want to own. I one, want it for 12 days and 12 hours it. specifically. Yeah, just for yeah. like a little bit. Yeah, trial run. I want it for 12 hours, 12 days, whatever. I'll get I'll get my right when like the buyer remorse is about to kick in. I'm already giving it back. Yeah, you probably only need 12 hours. I don't think you need 12 days. <laughs> I want to I want to watch some movies on that thing, you know? Okay, you can get a movie in, but in 12 hours, right? I want to watch <laughs> the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Two hours extended version. <laughs> Apple um, yeah, maybe like, I don't know, Samus's helmet, it's cool. It it's is. It's got like, you can scan things. Like if you, if Does it have a rebreather on it? You can scan everything. I mean, probably. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> she yeah. has to go to space and hostile planets with weird atmospheres. But imagine you'll be able to scan everything. It's like the DBC scanner, but if it was for all life forms, not just mm. people. Like, oh, I could, I could look at a plant and get like an encyclopedia entry about this plant instantly. My prepper so uncle would love that. 
Yeah, or like you see like a weird bug you're like, and it just tells you immediately. So you just have like mm -hmm. knowledge about your surroundings all the time. And it's got all the different visors of like, oh, it's got the um, like infrared and then it's got the other ones. So you yeah. can like see the world in different ways. Uh, so that might be a good one. <laughs> and if there's like a big explosion, you see your own face reflected in the visor for yeah, a moment. Perfect. You're like, that's who I am. That's because cool. you're my cool eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I had those. <laughs> I knew I had those. <laughs> Last question comes from Chalk Full of. What are you Chalk Full of? I want to know. If you could only play one game for the rest of the year, what would it be? This year? This year. Rest of the year. Any game. Any game. Rest of the I year. I said any game, not just not just 2024 right. games. Uh, yeah, one game for the rest of the year. What would it be? Probably Bellatro. Yeah, but I mean, that's probably going to happen for me anyway. Yeah, because I'm well, like, you know, yeah. I enjoyed Like a Dragon. I have been, I enjoyed Rebirth. I enjoyed Prince of Persia. But it's like, Bellatro is one I can always return to and never get tired of. Hmm. Or, you yeah. know, with reason, I'm sure. There's I'm always going to be podcasts that I need something to do while <laughs> I'm listening to them. And Bellatro is yeah. like currently number one in that list of like podcast games. So if it's not Bellatro, then it's my already existing answer, which is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. <laughs> is that a 2024 game? It doesn't I mean, have it's to be. Every, it's every year. It's a live service. Yeah. Game. Let's be real. Mine's going to be Fortnite. Probably. Yeah. That or try. I'll, I'll, I'll get really good at Trials. <laughs> I'll go pro. Get those, those hard stages at the end are impossible. To me, no currently. Man's at my current power level. Yeah, I was just saying, No Man's Sky. You can go see if Joe Danger Three is at the center. Mm, I could. That'll, that'll take I a could. year. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Um, let's go ahead and and close out here. Don't forget to follow the guys here on social media. You can follow Kyle at Kyle M Hilliard. You can follow Marcus at Marcus Stewart Seven, and you can follow me at It's Van Aken. Don't forget to go and grab a print subscription. We really appreciate it. Uh, get those at subscribe.gameinformer.com. Uh, and that's going to do it. We will see you all next Thursday. Bye. Bye.